Hello, good afternoon. I'm Dara Bunjan. I'm the food enthusiast here at J. Moore Living. If this is your first time tuning in, I'm a food writer, food stylist, PR maven, and a frustrated baker. I'm going to look side to side like this from time to time uh, at the computer to watch for any of your comments or questions you might have for me or our guest. So I don't want to waste any time. Today's guest is Donna Cravello, currently the concept director of Cosima at Mill One, a Sicilian restaurant. Welcome, Donna. Thank you, Sarah. Nice to see you. It's good to see you. And I hear that, you know, we're catching you on, I guess, your day off. You're home. Am I right? I am home. Yeah, okay. day off. I'm uh, testing some recipes here. Yeah. And uh, hanging out with my mother. <laughs> Well, Donna, let me ask you this. You're from New England. What brought you to Baltimore? I, um, I came to Baltimore, oh, in the mid 80s. Uh, I was working at the Boston Globe and I was working in the uh, food department. And I came to Baltimore and I started uh, redesigning the uh, food and home pages in, um, in the Baltimore Sun. And that was in 1984. Can you hear me? Well, I, I had some memory that you were a graphic artist, but did you have um, a food background before that, or it was just? You know, my main food background was um, just, you know, cooking at home and uh, watching my mother and my grandmother cook, and uh, I really was very interested in food. Uh, I remember coming to Baltimore, when I was working at the Baltimore Sun, I, uh, I was the assistant to a woman who was the food editor and I, I was food styling and really was, it was just, it was something that was so much a part of, of uh, what I really thought I wanted to do. I thought about being a food stylist and uh, when I came to Baltimore, I was doing a lot of that uh, as part of my designing. I was designing the pages and, and um, you know, bringing sort of new life and energy to the, to the sun. Um, 1992, you opened your first Donna's. Right. I can't remember the name of the building. It used to be the Tom Fullery, but didn't that building have a name? Right. That was the Park Plaza building. And, uh, I, uh, yep, we, um, uh, we found that space. I had, I had taken the bio. The, the Baltimore Sun was offering a buyout, and I took it right. at the end of 91. And because for the last couple, for the few years before that, I had a small catering business with my friend Michelle, and, um, and then I was thinking about opening a restaurant. And I just kept looking around, and I saw spaces. And I had come from Boston, where there was a cafe and a coffee shop on every corner. You could sit down and sit outside and have a little something. And there was, that, those things were pretty few and far between in Baltimore. So I thought, oh, you know, this is something I really want to do. And a mutual friend, Elizabeth, who was the food editor at the time, introduced me to my partner, Alan. And we opened the first John. As we kind of said, there's not coffee, there's not pastry, salad, sandwiches, fresh, you know, fresh breads. This is what we're going to do. And we just, we just got it together <laughs> and did that in 92. Right now, in '92, there were no Starbucks. He there were no Starbucks here. No, we. They didn't come to Baltimore Starbucks until '95. Okay, yeah, sounds about right. So, along with your your great food and the cafe, um, you did specialty coffees similar to Starbucks. Mm -hmm. And I remember one time talking to you, it probably doesn't stick with you, but it stuck with me. You told me how to make the perfect cup of coffee. Okay. Is that something you, <laughs> you did? You know, it, it was I how did. it should drip and come mm -hmm. in. Uh, can you, you have a moment to share that with some of our listeners? How to make the perfect cup of well, coffee. I, I think the perfect cup of coffee, like the perfect anything uh cake um bread it's it's got to be of course it, it appeals to your particular taste but i think you start with really good fresh ingredients 
and uh, you take the time uh, to make it. I would say you 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 grind your coffee and then you get hot water and you, and you do a pour over. I think that's probably the best the best cup of coffee to make. So sort of that Melita V shape. Exactly right. They were quite popular in the, in you know the late eighties, early nineties, and then they kind of went out of favor, and then they came back. And I remember being um, in Europe and going around and seeing that that was now the hottest thing. And I came back here, and a lot of people were were doing that that pour over. Yeah, but you get a really beautiful cup of coffee that way. Yeah. What was you know, in opening Donna's, when you did, there were very few female restaurateurs. What, mm -hmm. and, and going from graphic art to this, what was that aha moment or that black and white moment like from the Wizard of Oz and it turned color? When, what was that light bulb for you? Well, as, as I said, coming from um, another city, coming from Boston, and uh, coming to Baltimore and and realizing that you know, I couldn't get that cup of coffee. I couldn't sit down outside and have a, a, a sandwich on fresh, crusty bread or a, a salad that was made to order. When I told somebody that's what I wanted to do, they said, how can you do that? And I said, we can do it. But you know, I had never done it before, but I just had a feeling that I knew what people wanted and I knew that I could it. I think that's been the case with a lot of things that we've done over the years is you will, and I've said this to people before when they're thinking about starting a business, you you think about filling a void. You think about sort of what you want too. I wanted that coffee. I wanted that pastry. I wanted sandwiches. Don't, don't worry about the notice. <laughs> Just let it go, Donna. So, um, Okay. How okay. hard was it? Yeah, we're fine. How hard was it 92 to get the funding to open up Donna's? Was did you see that there was a no, problem um, with you being a woman? Well, I had a business partner and, and that was Alan Hirsch and um, he 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 had recently sold the city paper, if you remember that, and I had recently taken bio. So we kind of put our funds and our ideas together, and then we looked around for different spaces. And uh, at the Park Plaza, uh, Mark Kaplan, who owned the building, was willing to um, work with us on that and help us build it out. And we uh, we just got the we tried to use the most inexpensive the materials and uh, and put it together as as inexpensively as we could with a lot of good ideas and Patrick Sutton was the on our first project so we had well working with us from the very beginning right you know when I said that you're going to be on the show a couple of people said oh Donna's I miss the roasted pepper salad you really had some fresh ideas to offer people. yeah the roasted vegetable salad was was the hit. Was that the number one seller? Right. Well, that became a signature salad. It was the number one seller for 28 years, and I still have people asking me about the roasted vegetable salad. You know, that salad kind of came up. Um, I had been to Sicily um, a couple times before it opened uh, Donna's, and they had these wonderful little uh, Trattoria-style places where you could go in and get uh, have a table set up of marinated artichokes and peppers and eggplant and other wonderful vegetables. And so I came back and I had these platters set up so the people could come in and I would imagine they would pick what they wanted. It got so busy and I was by myself making these salads that I finally took all the vegetables, put them on a salad and called it Donna's salad. <laughs> and that's <laughs> how that became the, the number one salad. Yeah. Necessity is the mother invention, isn't it? Um, so let's talk now, That's Donna right. Right. Cosima, and uh, you are the concept mm -hmm. director at Cosima. 
And I'm just going to throw it out to you to tell people about Cosima, where you're located, what the concept is, and what you're doing there. Were you able to hear me? Okay. Well, um, Cosima was named after. I can hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, Cosima was named after my, my grandmother, Cosima, who was silly. Um, we. Uh, when uh, when the first when we first came up about you know opening uh, the restaurant, um, Judy Golding, who's the owner, and, and I were trying to come up with some uh, great names for it. And she said, "What was your grandmother's name?" And I said, "Well, it was Kosima." And she said, "That's it. That's you know that's the name." So it, it's kind of a um, the restaurant is on. False Road. It's not the end, but we have a website and we've started, um, you know, we can give you easy directions to get there. And once you find it, people say, oh, now that I found it, I'll, I'll definitely, you know, come another time. Another time. And we have some great, great, great uh, weeks. We've had some great weeks recently. We have a beautiful outside. We have a view of the Jones Falls, uh, you know, just rushing by. And we have great blue herons and uh, ducks and geese, and it's really lovely. And then a couple of hats, and you get to the front door, and we have uh, a valet, and it's complimentary. And then you come inside, and we've restored this old mill, and it's, uh, it's called Mill Number no. One. And so it was a textile mill back in the uh, late 1800s. So we have stone and brick and pizza oven, this great brick um, chip. So it's, it really feels, a lot of, when we first saw it, we just feel like we're in Italy. And that's what people say when they come, when they come down the driveway and they walk onto the back patio, that they feel like they've been transported. Uh, they say, this doesn't feel like I'm in Baltimore. You have a garden out there. That's one of your things that you do along with tennis and running, I think. Yes, don't you tend to that great herb garden? garden? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And it overlooks the Jones oh, Falls. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't. It keep up with uh, you know 150 people. But could you say that again? I said the patio overlooks it the overlooks Jones, Jones Falls, Falls. Right. and it's Not beautiful. And you were able to adapt. Yes, it does. During the prime mm -hmm. time of Cosima, and. Like other restaurants, Cosima was doing takeaway and delivery. And now we're back. The patio is open. People need to come. And not only do you, I mean, you have mm -hmm. pizza, but it's Sicilian theme that you're doing the whole fish in. Aren't you doing like the whole fish in the pizza oven, the brick oven? It's pot item that's been on the menu since. It's a whole bronzino uh, with a, a Sicilian salmurillo sauce and a, a, um, some greens or salad on the side. We have a spit roasted uh, chicken and uh, some other Sicilian dishes like a, a Chapanese uh, seafood, which is from uh, on the uh, northwest coast of Sicily, Buffalo, and so there's a lot of seafood. We also grill meat, and we have pieces from our brick oven and and desserts. It made as many. We I make gelato. I make the cakes and um, other cannoli. So right now you're open some, for dinner. Uh, rum cakes for Mother's Day. Some Italian rum cakes. Dinner, and your yeah, wine uh, list, Tuesday, isn't it all wine? All, I mean all wine. Yeah, your wine list is all wine. We're not all um, wine. Isn't it all Italian wines? Are you doing any other wines? It's actually, it's actually all Southern Italian wines. So uh, a lot of uh, people have, have been educated and enjoy having wines that they, 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 uh, they haven't had before. So they're from... Sicily, uh, Puglia, um, uh, Sardinia, anything that's just about south of Rome, we have we have uh, on our menu. 
and some really one kind. Now you're doing dinner. Are you doing anything on brunches? So we are always willing to give people a taste. No, we did brunch for a little bit, but we are, uh, we're just focusing on dinner now. But we do have special events, and I have a brunch wedding coming up next week. So uh, we have actually a lot of events in the next few months, um, small weddings. Well, that's good news. On the back patio, and it's a, it's a great yeah. place. Uh, yeah. Mother's Day. It is good news. It, we've, uh, you know, we, we weathered the Mother's Day. <laughs> our, Mother's Day is our, are there any reservations left? Um, I know there's a delay, there so I'm waiting. There are a few reservations, but there are a lot of reservations right now. But there are still some reservations. Yeah, you're waiting. <laughs> yeah. Right. For still, some reason, we have a delay, so I I speak and then I wait until you get it. Um, everybody knows how much I love technology and how well it works for me. Um, Best or worse, or both, yeah, best or know. worse that advice that you've ever to... received? Oh, before I opened Donna's, I talked to women who owned restaurants and, um, you know, and I said, well, what do you think? And she said, well, whatever you do, keep it small. So that was good advice, but I didn't follow that <laughs> <laughs> as you know, um, it didn't stay small. Uh, <laughs> but, it, you know, you just think of their own and kind of move ahead and you do, you do what you can as you go. But, you know, we've had some great people working with us over the years and, and, I, and I think I don't know. Um, I'm happy about all of that. I'm happy that a lot of our Donna's customers are now Cosima customers as well. Well, obviously that helped, I mean, during this terrible time, um, the support of your loyal customers and coming down and... Oh, yes, um, we had... Um, you were oh, always, yeah, you've yeah, always loved carry teaching carry cooking and you did that at Donna's, you're doing that at Cosima, but... Very special mm -hmm. evening that you're going to be doing for Meals on Wheels, their night of a million meals. Um, you and two other chefs are doing demos. Okay. Now, for people who don't know about Meals on Wheels, it is a charity. It's nationwide, Baltimore, it's Central Maryland. Um, they need it now because mm -hmm. during the pandemic, what happened was that it tripled what the requests were for these meals for the homebound. So yeah. Donna, I'm going to throw it out to you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're well, a little delayed here. If, um, if people go to the Meals on Wheels website, right. For people to go onto the Meals on Wheels website and donate, um, I, I now more than ever, people who are homebound really need those meals. In fact, in Massachusetts, my my aunt, uh, Cosima's daughter, uh, relied on those uh, meals on wheels to come to her home. She she couldn't get out, and her daughter was uh, you know not able to get to her house. And um, it's it's important for people to. Uh, to eat, we, we do take it for granted. We talk about restaurants and we talk about, you know, going out to, to eat now. But some people, uh, you know, they, they do have these um, needs and we, we do take it. This, this event every year, except for last year, was uh, has always been a huge success. And uh, I think this year, in virtual form, it will be as well. Our executive chef, Anthony uh, Franklin, is going to be doing a demo and we're putting together a um, you know, a kit, and, and our uh, beverage director, uh, Aaron Simons, has also put together uh, a wonderful cocktail. So uh, you can you can get that as, as part of uh, your donation. Right. They have two tickets that they offer for $50 per person. You can come in and enjoy the cooking demos from Cosima. 
uh, Jerry Edwards from the Manor Tavern, and from Jason Hisley by Cake by Jason. And they're going to be doing demos. Mm -hmm. And you can watch the demos. You can participate in the silent yeah. auction, which starts May 10th. And May 17th is the event. And for 75, you get all the food that's being demoed. And that I believe you can pick up. There might be delivery. Mm -hmm. But that is Meals on Wheels, MD.org. And you can learn more about it there and for donna's before i forget understand this all floats up in the notes and it'll be up on the facebook page as well as the jay Moore living page uh donna it's cosima mill one.com and their instagram and facebook is cosima baltimore and uh i you know I, i'm just thrilled to see you again mm -hmm. there's Little things um, you know, came back to me that I had the opportunity <laughs> to work with yeah, Patricia we're... Wells and uh, through the American Institute of Wine and Food. And you hosted Patricia mm -hmm. Wells, the famous author um, who's done the Paris cookbook at Donna's. That and was a I'll just. Night. It was Ned Atwater. I can't remember who else was in the kitchen. Nona? I think. Nona Nielsen Parker was in the kitchen. Nona was, yes. Yeah. Yeah, those were. Yeah. We're yeah, great evenings. That, that great that, that was a wonderful cookbook. She was great. Yeah. I remember it had lavender on the front on the illustration. I remember that. So, uh, remind people uh, mm -hmm. silent auction, May 10th. Yeah. The virtual event, May 17th, mealsonwheels.org, backslash Million Meals 2021. They need your support more than ever. They have, as they state on their website, it should be 2 million meals yeah. because that's how much they're doing. Not only do they need to buy a ticket, make a donation, they need volunteers. Volunteers to drop off the meals, volunteers to help prep in the mm -hmm. kitchen. So I have two questions I ask at the end of the show, Donna. Right. The first one is, what was your most epic culinary fail? Mm -hmm. I guess she didn't hear me. Um, oh, boy. I think everybody tries to block up as many as <laughs> I say everybody tries to block them out, but um, I was doing a cooking class and I asked somebody to grab me uh, some sugar. I was making biscotti and I, I start, I threw the, what I thought was the sugar into the bowl and I'm mixing it and mixing it and it's not coming together. And then I tasted it and it was salt. So, you know, I, I should have checked first. That was probably uh, one, one big one. And... Uh, trying to think of any anything else that would be pretty epic um i remember we all as part of the american institute of wine and food we we did two dinners for julia child which was great and um i made the uh, the roasted hair salad and some of the pears just we were ready to kind of go on as we say some of my pears had turned brown i was just going through them and cutting them up and trying to sell it what I could. They were waiting for me to, with Julia and uh, and uh, so I ran over to the to the hotel and she said, well, we were worried about you. <laughs> and then I was trying to salvage some of the pears for her salad and she later told me that the, pear, that the salad was uh, her favorite course. <laughs> and she was happy to see a woman in the kitchen. So that was, that was that, a good memory. She was that, that's, idol. That's I, Julia. I, I, I had her I watched her when I was eight years old on TV. Yeah, yeah. And to wrap um, up, the TV show was live. And uh, to yeah, to wrap up, my final yeah. question is: What didn't I ask you that I should have? Um. 
I, who, who inspired me to do what I do. And I would say my mother, you know, here we are right around the corner from Mother's Day. Um, and uh, my mother and my grandmother, you know, inspired me to just uh, be who I am and, and make people happy by feeding them. <laughs> You know, make me happy if you feed me. That's Again, for sure. I am. Um, that's right. We'll come by and I'll feed you. <laughs> okay. We'll do. We'll do. Feed we'll do. Feed people on um, and, and uh, support Meals on Meals on May 17th. Right. Thank you, Dara. Thank you, Donna. You stay well. And thank you so much. And, um, Next week, everyone, it's National Nurses Week. So treat a nurse. Take them to Cosima or get them a ticket for Meals on Wheels. Let them have an evening of watching other people work. Next week, I'm going to be speaking to the chef from the Lansdowne Inn and Spa in Virginia. We appreciate you when you share our show. Uh, which is up on Facebook on the Jay Moore page immediately after the show. And in a couple hours, it'll be on the jmoreliving.com page. If you need to reach me, Dara Bunjan, you can reach me at food at jmoreliving.com. My social is at Dara Cooks. If the weather's nice, you know, we keep, you know, welcome to Baltimore. It's hot one day, rainy, humid, dry, whatever. But more and more people are going outside and taking walks and runs. So take the show with you, you know, put on your earphones or earbuds and listen to the show. Uh, until next week, it'll be the same time, same place. Get your vaccinations, wear your mask where applicable. And um, like I said, Get your vaccinations. I got mine a ways back, along with my distemper shot. Um, wear your mask again, as I said, and may your plates always, always remain full. We will see you next week. Thank you for tuning in and sharing our show. <laughs>